Before we begin, I need you to understand something. Bleach means so much to me. Bleach was the first anime I sat down to watch. Bleach was the first manga I read. I was there for Bleach every week. I was also there for Bleach's ending. The fact that I'm even doing these chapter reviews is thanks to Tekken 101, card in the top right, and his Bleach reviews. So I believe I stand with all of you here today when I say, I've never been so happy to drink some Bleach. If my channel wasn't monetized before, it certainly isn't monetized now. With that out of the way, let me tell you to like and subscribe, yada yada yada, who cares about that when you got a new Bleach chapter? And its name is No Breathes From Hell. Yes, Breathes, I thought that was weird too. Our new chapter begins with narration from whom I assume is Ichigo's son, Kazui Kurosaki, speaking about his pet goldfish. He used to have two, but they grew at uneven rates, one thriving while the other wilted. When the larger one died, the smaller one caught up and even grew bigger. Something Kazui says he is thankful for. The message behind Kazui's story appears to be evocative of a larger theme of this arc. The theme that things that get too big, too large, or too powerful can begin to harm the things around them. Moving forward a bit, we see Orihime, or should I say Orihibe, checking to make sure our son is still asleep when he is in fact up to mischief. Better yet, we get to see Khan. Remember him? No? That's fair. I really like this dynamic of Khan as the angel on Kazui's shoulder that gets ignored. I hope Khan is a mainstay for more of the Kazui-focused moments to at least give the lion some more screen time. He tells Kazui not to go out so late, but Kazui ignores him and rides on the spirit of two fish who I assume to be the goldfish he was talking about earlier. This next part gives me flashbacks to the earliest chapters of Bleach. Instead of a teenager consoling a dead child, it's a child consoling a dead teenager. The parallels here are obvious, but that only serves to make me more curious. In the beginning of Bleach, Ichigo's violence was lampshaded by his kind nature, which makes me interested in Kazui. Does Kubo intend to show that Kazui has some sort of hidden depths we aren't exactly aware of yet? Does the boy's kindness hide some sort of frightful anger that would put the Vasho Lorde to shame? I worry for this boy's future, y'all, but for now, Kazui resolves to take the dead teenager to a small shrine where he shouldn't be alone anymore. Kazui does a small ritual and opens a mouth portal to Soul Society, or maybe that's what we're supposed to think. There are details later in the chapter that makes me think the teenager went to a very different place, but more on that later. Oh, and fun fact, Kazui actually does the motions for a traditional Shinto prayer to open said portal. From here, we transition into Soul Society, where Rukia and Renji's daughter is traveling to sword practice. Her name is Ichika Abarai, and her master is the lieutenant of the 11th Division, Ikaku Matarame. This is probably one of the cuter scenes in the chapter, watching Ikaku so deftly handle Ichika, proving that he's still cool as hell all these years later. And I like Ichika's character already, saying that Ikaku's gotten stronger like she's the master in this relationship. The training session is cut short by the introduction of Femboy Supreme, Yumachika, who pulls Ikaku aside to deal with a very special situation. Twelve years after a captain's death, all the captains attend a vigil of sorts where they kill a hollow that the lieutenants capture, per Soul Society's tradition. It doesn't happen all that often, cause captains usually last a few millennia, but with the whole Aizen debacle and then there is Yuha shenanigans, they're having some frequent funerals lately. They've already done Yamamoto's and Unohana's, but this time they're doing Ukitake's and Ichigo just so happens to be invited to this one. It makes sense because the only captains closer to Ichigo than Ukitake would be Rukia, Byakuya, and maybe Kenpachi, but I'm stretching on that last one. Anyways, Renji is talking to Ichigo, who's helping Keigo by attending his new ramen shop called Spirit Ramen, which is a kinda garbo name, but hey, you do you, Keigo. And Rukia even stops by to say hello to Ichigo and even insists that he comes to the vigil. It appears that Soul Society has made some progress since we've last seen them since they've apparently got phones and FaceTime. They've also got TVs, which can tune into the human world now thanks to everyone's favorite poorly dressed man with the funny hat. And praise of Orohara is something Captain Mayuri can't tolerate, seeing as he interjects on the conversation thanks to these hologram bug things, which Mayuri is using to message all the Vice Captains. Something Ichika conveniently overhears from around a hidden corner. The message is that all Vice Captains must head over to the human world to capture the Hollow for the vigil. We see Nanao head out and Soifong kicking Komaida so he actually gets off his ass. We then jump to the 7th Division where Iba has become captain, which I find super interesting because I want to see his Bonkai. His Shikai just gave his sword a pointy bit, so I have no idea what his Bonkai will do. Give his sword extra pointy bits? The new lieutenant of the 7th Division is a young pretty boy named Itao. Or at least I think that's how it's pronounced. 
He's a brand new character who apparently really digs his birds. From this small interaction, we can see that Iba has some trouble communicating with Atau, likely because he's deaf, but Atau does seem competent at his job already ahead of his captain. After that, we take a visit to see the 10th Division with Toshiro and Rangiku. Vanilla Ice is a bit peeved that Mayuri went out of his way to set up something so elaborate, and Matsumoto ponders if this is because he's annoyed by Urahara's scientific contributions. This thought is carried over into the 9th Division by Osagi, who's promptly attacked by laser eye beams. I honestly really like the tech developments that are happening in Soul Society. It seems that after getting clowned on during the Thousand Year Blood War by UI and his army, they decided to catch up with the times. And from a world building perspective, it actually makes a lot of sense. Tech is often developed during war times and it is only during the ensuing times of peace that it begins to be adapted for civilian use. I really do want to see what changes have happened in the Rukongai, but considering the direction this arc is headed, we probably won't see the Rukongai very much. Back to topic, we very briefly see Ichika decide to join them on their trip to the human world like the mischievous little brat she is. You don't need to be Aizen to know that this is going to be a fuster cluck of the grandest proportions. And the fuster cluck begins in the human world with all the lieutenants and Ichigo generally shooting the shit while they wait around. Ichigo doesn't understand why all the lieutenants have to go catch a hollow, Renji tells them to not judge their traditions, and Rangiku says they should hurry up so they can all drink together. Also turns out that Ichigo works as a translator now, so good for him. Put that English degree to use, my man. We finally get some formal introductions from Renji for the new characters. The new lieutenant of the 7th Division's full name is Atau Rindo. Huh, he shares the name Rindo with the protagonist of Neo: The World Ends With You. Speaking of the game, I have a review of it in the works, I'm just working on the side content, so subscribe if you're into that stuff. Self-shilling aside, back in Bleach, we learn that Atau is deaf, which is cool, and he can read lips, which is also cool. Then we meet the character I'm probably the most hyped to see in the coming chapters. She's the new lieutenant of Squad 8, Shion Yayahara. She's been heavily influenced by the Garyu subculture of Japan, which is actually a super interesting thing I recommend you read about. I am tempted to give a small anthropology lesson about it, but... Okay, indulge me for just one pointless factoid. The term Daru is actually a literal translation of the English word girl, but with Japanese pronunciation. There, I am satisfied for the moment, now let's put away my stupid facts and get back into the chapter. We get a small line that she's actually Lisa's lieutenant, which explains a lot about Yayahara. Yayahara also appears to be an Ichigo fangirl, asking him that he adds her as a friend on social media, so in conclusion, we stand a queen. It's around this time that we catch back up with Ichika, who's pretty stoked about actually being able to sneak off to the human world. A neat little detail I didn't notice upon my first reading was the hell butterfly floating above her head, foreshadowing for the next panel. Ichika has a horrifying realization as something appears behind her father and friends. She shouts a word of warning, but it only serves to distract her father as he's attacked by the beast. Renji gets pimp slapped through a house while Ichigo puts down the hollow. The rest of the lieutenants and Ichigo jump into action, taking note of how weird these hollows are for not having any Riatsu. We see a Tao unleashes Zanpakuto by writing its name on the blade, probably because he's deaf and can't actually say its name. The blade itself takes the form of a bunch of paper dolls. A Tao is then able to transform the paper dolls, in this instance he transforms them into birds to shred a hollow. And then we see Yayahara jump into action. She doesn't use a Zanpak Toe or even a Kido, she uses a strange unarmed technique to take the head of the hollow. I think this might be another one of Soul Society's new developments, like a progression of their unarmed martial art we've seen a few times in the series. Oh, and that martial art they use is called Hakuta, or White Hits. Next, we see Akon from the 11th Division do... something. It's not a Zanpak Toe ability or anything like that, so I suppose it's some sort of spell or sciencey thing. The Lieutenant from the 3rd Division, Izuru Kira, makes a timely arrival to save Akon. Honestly, it's damn good to see some more Bleach-style action, even better that it was focused on showing off characters who haven't really fought before and establishing hype for the new ones. I hope the Lieutenants take on an important role in the future, because they've got some neat Zanpakuto abilities and skills that were never really shown off if their name wasn't Renji Abarai or Ruki Akuchiki. And even those two got the shaft a lot. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen though, because even Renji gets a piece of the action here and he's not even with the main group. He goes to head back after making sure his daughter is safe when these chains ensnare him and rising from the ground is an old foe a few of you may recognize. Silopero Grans, the Eighth Espada, literally back from hell. He taunts Renji a bit, but who gives a shit about that when we get the first bits of hell lore in literal years. Years! 
However, before we explain what Saizel is talking about, let's look at what's underneath Saizel's feet. A strange portal with teeth, you know, like the one Kazui summoned. If this means what I think it means, then Kazui should have some sort of hellish power. Has Kazui been accidentally sending spirits to hell? Does this have something to do with how he managed to pop away that bubble of Yuha's power? Is Yuha now in hell? Ugh, <sighs> so many questions and absolutely none of them are answered in this chapter, so let's just set them aside for now and move on. Saizel explains that upon going to hell, a hollow's hole will move to the outside of their body, resembling a halo of all things, and the negative emotions will leak outside of their head to form horns. I am in love with Saizel's new design, it is much less refined and much more demonic, which is a total vibe. Renji tries to fly away with Ichigo, but those chains ensnare him, literally digging into his flesh until Ichigo proves he still got the good stuff with one of his patented hero entrances. I can already hear number one playing in the background, or maybe I've actually added it in the video, why don't you go ahead and tell me in the comments. And thus, Renji is tagged out and Ichigo is tagged in for his fight with Saizel. I find it funny that he has no idea who this is, like Renji never told him about the Espada he fought. This fight is actually very reminiscent of Kenpachi vs Komamura since it's mostly off screen. Instead of a fight, we get to see a vigil in Soul Society with the rest of the captains. The captains are just chilling around when strange gloopy globs of something appear in the air. It's worth noting that even someone like Soifan who has been a part of Soul Society for a while doesn't even understand what these things are. It takes one of the oldest characters in the series, the Captain Commander Kuraku Shensui, to put a name to them. These things are Will-O-Wisp from Hell, something that shouldn't ever appear in Soul Society. As he examines the Will-O-Wisp, Shensui begins to indulge the rest of the captains in an age-old superstition. The tale Soul Society tells is that captains contain such strong and potent Ryatsu that they can't return to Soul Society in death like other Shinigami. That's what this vigil is supposed to be for, but the superstition says something else. There is no way for captains to feed the soil of Soul Society, yet they must go somewhere in death, so those captains' remains are sent to the one place they have left. Hell. A horrifying idea indeed. This links back to the story Kazui told in the beginning. Goldfish that grow too large need to be removed. This reminds me of the first few pages of Can't Fear Your Own World, the Bleach novels that take place right after the Thousand Year Blood War. Ichibe outright states to Grimjow that he's not going to kill him despite being a hollow. It's simply because Grimjow is too strong and that killing him would just ruin the feeble balance of the worlds. It appears that such a thing also applies to the captains of Soul Society. Back in the manga, Saizel explains that it was Soul Society sending so many legendary captains down so quickly that broke the balance, allowing him to come back. It's nice that Kubo is now reinforcing the idea that a Soul Reaper's job is not to kill Hollows, but to keep the balance of the worlds at quite literally any cost, even sending their own friends to hell. Saizel appears to be rubbing such a fact in Ichigo's face when the doors of hell spring up from nowhere and he's run through by a very familiar looking blade. A blade that very clearly belongs to Ukatake Jushiro. It appears that captains sent down to hell become those wardens called Kushinata. Before he goes, Saizel makes one final point. Hell has always been closer than he realized. After all, the butterflies that guide around Shinigami do have hell in their name. And the final page shows Ichigo's son, Kazui, innocently running after one of those hell butterflies. And thus ends the first chapter of Bleach's Return. Overall, this is a very solid start to something new. It seems like Kubo has really taken what he's learned from his years of writing Bleach and then writing Burn the Witch to tell this story. This setup is fantastic, finally exploring what was brought up once before in the series proper to the joy of fans who've been asking about hell for years. These new characters are dope, a Tao Zanpak Toe is unlike any other we've seen and Yayahara is best girl. I genuinely can't wait to see more of them. The weakest character introduced in this chapter is probably Ichika. That's not to say she's poorly written, she just hasn't shown any new insights into her personality. Granted, we have an entire arc for her to show her stuff, so this will probably change in the future. And of course, I'd be remiss not to mention the hidden gem of this chapter, Kazui Kurosaki. I am 90% sure that Kazui is not part Shinigami, instead I think he's part Kushinata or Hell Warden. It appears that Kazui himself is going to be incredibly important to this arc focused on Hell since he's already been shown to have some sort of hellish powers of his own. The portal he makes is exactly like the one Saizel used and we never get to see the inside of the one Kazui makes. 
We know that Shinigami do become Hell Wardens or something, so it's not impossible that the Shinigami powers Ichigo passed on to his son have transformed into something else. I do plan on doing a theory video about Kazui's nature, so subscribe if you want to see it. Speculation aside, I'm just glad we're finally getting some canon info on Hell. The Hellverse was fine, but this new arc, New Breathes from Hell, is going to be fire. And before you ask, no, I will not apologize for that pun. If you enjoyed this review, subscribe and hit the bell if you like Jujutsu Kaisen or Neo The World Ends With You, cause I have videos about those on the horizon, or maybe they're already out. Again, I have no idea when I'm uploading this. And with that, I must say, this is your host Fury, signing out.